Hey guys, today I'm working on a little stainless steel project for a, a co-worker of mine. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through the like process I go through in order to make um, these pieces of stainless steel artwork. I've only done a couple, but um, I think the process is pretty solid. So I figured I'd share it with you guys. But uh, here, let me pick up the camera here and kind of show you what I got. Uh, so the first thing is is uh, I got a Dremel here and we're going to use this to take our template which I'll show you here in a minute um, and we're going to use that to actually etch it into the material. Now here's our sheet of 304 stainless. Um, we're going to be using a flap disc to clean this guy up and get it ready for welding. And then this guy here, this is a quarter inch thick um, 10 by 13 uh, piece of steel. I'm going to use it as a chill block. I'll get that prepped up too. And then uh, we're gonna actually tack this down to prevent some distortion. And uh, here's another piece I've been kind of, uh, you know, I finished it up, but I'm gonna be using this as a, um, as a piece to uh, just kind of practice in between welds and stuff while this cools and whatnot. Uh, and then uh, of course we're gonna need some 308L uh, filler wire. This is 045. And then once we get everything cleaned up, I'm gonna use this acetone that I have here a clean rag to uh, basically wipe everything down and yeah so I'll get my template get everything cleaned up and I will come back for the actual uh, template part so one thing to make note of here is this is an 80 grit flap disc and I actually just finished grinding on this uh, chill block that I made okay now this doesn't have to be perfect or anything it's just gonna help adhere to my stainless here a little easier if it's clean and, uh, anyway, so on this uh, heat block, I used a hard disc, a rock wheel, but uh, and then I kind of cleaned it up with this 80 grit flat disc. Now this guy here, I only use this for uh, steels. I bought these flat discs here, and uh, this is rated for um, for steels and stainlesses. But this is I've only ever ground on stainless with this, and it helps prevent. Um, contaminants from the other steels or whatever you're grinding on getting in there so that's why I use two different discs. Another thing I like to think about whenever I'm getting ready to tack this guy up so I'll put it on here and you can kind of see I don't know how well but this is like uh, I'm pushing down on that corner over there and you'll see this one's kind of lifting up so it has a little bit of give on the sides. If I flip this guy over It sits relatively flat, so that's mostly from the shear whenever they cut this. Um, but the thing is, is now, now there's a little gap. If I was to weld this down like this right now, there'd be a gap right underneath the center. And my heat, it won't chill as easily, and so I might damage my colors in the steel. So I'm going to make sure I run it on this side. So whenever I, I'm going to use a clamp and clamp it down, and then tack it down around the edges. And uh, that should help keep the center held down so I don't have a lot of, I uh, don't lose any of my heat sink. And I just kind of wanted to show you my torch here. Uh, this is a WS-17 torch. Um, this, cut, this is the torch that came with my AHP Alpha TIG 201 XD. Um, but I have the long back cap on there just so I had to put the full tungsten in it and I didn't have to cut it in half. And I'm not having to get in, into anywhere tight, so it's not really been a big deal. Um, and then also on the end, I have a M Furic Fupa 12 cuff on it. Uh, this is wonderful for doing the stainless steel stuff. It gives you an enormous gas coverage envelope, um, and it just makes getting the colors and the gas coverage and making everything turn out pretty a lot better. And it also allows you to stick out your tungsten a lot further. Now this is probably only, you know, 75% of how far you can stick it out. I mean, you could stick it out almost a full inch and be fine. So it's just a great deal for this. So now that I have everything set up, I got the machine running about 116 amps and uh, I'm be using a foot pedal so I can kind of control it. Uh, I'm gonna throw some tacks around here. I'm gonna throw a lot of them because the stainless really wants to distort when you weld it. Uh, so I'm gonna throw a bunch on here. We'll do a little time lapse and then we'll be right back.
All right, now that we've got this guy all tacked up, I can go get my template, and then uh, we can flap disc this guy, get it nice and shiny, and then uh, I'll show you guys how to cut the template into the steel. I put on my stainless steel 120 grit flap disc. I'm just gonna kind of take my time, make sure my patterns turn out nice and uh, even throughout the piece, and we're just gonna go over it and shine it up a little bit. All right, here we go. So we got Rick on the piece of uh, material here, and what I'm going to use is this uh, this is the Dremel 4000, a uh, really nice tool. I have it set on, uh, looks about 20 or so. I'm using this, uh, it's a little kind of pointed, rounded bit at the end. It works pretty good. Um, now one thing that's important, there's a couple things that are important when you do this, okay? One is that you want to start at the very middle first and work your way out to the sides. The other thing is when this is spinning, it rotates clockwise. So if you're going to, you know, draw a line like, let's say I wanted to do this, you'd want to go like this and go sideways with it and kind of turn around the point. Instead of trying to go up because it wants to keep going from left to right. So if you can use it and then kind of move around where you want to go, it'll make a big difference for you. So I'm gonna get started on this. There he is in all his glory. So before we get too much further, uh, I think I should uh, take some acetone, wipe it down, get it looking all nice, get a couple before a bit of photos, and uh, yeah, I'll take some acetone on this uh, little rag I have. With me. But I'm thinking it's looking awesome. Seems like the colors are coming in pretty good. Uh, I got a little hot through here almost even, so I'm gonna jump up here and lay another bead up here. Dial back the amperage a little bit and uh, with my foot anyway, with this machine set where it's at, and uh, lay another one. But I like the way it's going in. That one's really nice. I have to say that's about exactly what I was hoping for. That looks really, really nice. Got a little hot towards the middle, but I think it was about right to get those purples and blues. That's really nice. Like I said, I'm gonna start with the eyebrow with the weave. And uh, if I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be lying. <laughs> 